Hi everyone, and welcome to Simply Singapore with Aslan Blow. I'm the co-host Larry Fenelier, and joining us we have. Before we get into Aslan's kitchen, let me introduce the folks in the strip. Actually, there's only one person here, Michelle Rebel, and he's from France. Hey, Michelle. Is he muted? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my my, my 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 button my mute button is uh, you know like that. Good yeah. evening, good evening, yeah, Larry, hello everybody, Lynn, you are beautiful as always, uh, happy to be with you again on Simply Singapore. Yeah. Good, and uh, Lynn will be doing Mulligatoni, Mulligatani, sorry, <laughs> Sue, I had to get a pronunciation right because she told me it's Mulligatoni, right, okay, Az, take it away. Cool, thanks Larry, I, I must say you're looking rather Dapper in your um, Indian top there. What is it called? Well, it's not a dhoti. It's um, it's a it's a short sleeve Indian shirt. Uh, what 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 you guys call it? Uh, it's supposed to be the whole outfit is supposed to be salwar kameez, I think, is it? I don't know. I don't know if it's the right thing, but yeah, yeah. looking good, looking good there. Diwali isn't too far away, is it? That's correct. Thank you. <laughs> and I th I think since we're doing the um the South Indian dish today, I might as well put on my Indian garb. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Okay. Thanks, for Thanks for joining us, Michelle, as always. It's always lovely to have you joining us in you're our welcome. show. Yes, you're welcome, Lynn. I'm happy again to, to be with you. So, uh, cool. You know, cool. I learned right. so much when you cook Asian. Thank you. Today we're going to be doing um, um, a dish of Indian origin with an Indian slant and South Indian as well. Now it's called Malikatani. Um, all of you in, in the UK will know this dish. Now I wonder whether you are, it's just as common in America as well. I don't know. If, if it is, let, let us know in the, in the comments stream, okay? Um, now um, Malikatani comes from two um, is South Indian words, a Tamil, Tamil is the, is the language we're talking about here, Maligo meaning pepper and Tani meaning water in Tamil. So it really we're talking pepper, water and its origin, it dates back to the days of the British Raj um, when, the, when, when the Brits were in, in India. Um, the story goes that um, the Tamil cooks wanted to satisfy the Brits need for soup, especially in the cool, cooler mm. months, and they came up with this pepper water. And of course, over the years, it's been it's it, it's been you know um, um, added to the stuff got taken out, put in, etc., etc. And when the Brits uh, went back, they, they they combined it with their own ingredients. And of course, this to me is what I grew up with. I have over the years added to it. Now, in its basic form, it resembles rasam, another mm. Indian dish. Um, rasam is a hot and sour soup, but not the soup we're used to in the West, but more broth-like. So that's the base of this dish, the way my granny used to make it. And then we've added European, European stuff to it in the form of, um, let me see if this camera works, in the form of celery, um, tomatoes, carrots, capsicum or bell pepper. Um, and so you have your European and you have your Asian and it becomes a Eurasian dish. This is a Eurasian dish or an Anglo-Indian dish. I'm going to get right started. Uh, right started? I'm going to get started right away. Now, <laughs> we're going to uh, turn that on and we're going to start with sauteing our spices. Um, very much like an Indian curry. Um, have we got this camera on here, um, Larry? Yes, yes it is. Yes, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to briefly go through the, the um, ingredients with you. Here we've got your, um, in the, the recipes on linsfood.com, link is on the event page. I've divided the dry ingredients up into dry ingredients, one dry ingredients, two. As you can see, we've got just a little bit of mustard seed, um, some dried chilies. This is, you know, if you can't get them, never mind, skip it, but if you can get the dried chilies, they really add to the final dish. Likewise, the curry leaves. If you can't get fresh curry leaves, dried ones will do. If you really can't get curry leaves, add a bay leaf and then finish the dish off with some fresh coriander leaves. And here we've got some cardamom, some cloves and a tiny bit of cinnamon. Dry ingredients number one. Dry ingredients number two, we've got um, 
coriander, cumin, turmeric, lots of black pepper, coarsely ground black pepper, and some chili powder. And then your standard onion, garlic, ginger, and green chili that we are going to chop up. Now, what my granny used to do, and I still do for, for a lot of my curries and my stews, is that she dumps it into a chopper, dumps this whole lot into a chopper, and blitz, she blitzes it. Is that such a word? Blitzes it? Yeah, yeah, blitz. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to saute those ingredients. Now, I've got my heat turned on medium here. And um, what I'm going to start doing off first, I'll go through the rest of the ingredients as we're cooking. What I'm going to start doing off, uh, doing, my prepositions are all over the place today. Mm. Uh, here we are. We're going to heat that oil over medium heat. We don't want it too hot because if it's too hot, it's going to burn the spices. This first stage is called tempering. The heat's got to be medium. And what we're going to do is all these whole spices are going to get heated up, are going to get cooked, and it's going to allow the essential oils to, to, to seep out of, of the spices. Now we do this for only about 30 seconds. As soon as the mustard seeds, or if you're using cumin seeds um, in another dish, start to splutter, we're going to add something moist and wet in there. Now, if the heat is too high, the spices are going to burn. If the heat is too low, nothing's going to happen to the spices. So, cover your ears. Wow, that's a real... So now the tempering is done with our dry spices number one. Now what we're going to do is, before it burns, we're going to add something moist in there to lower the heat. Mm. And that's where your onion, garlic and ginger mixture come in. So we're going to saute this. Crush those chili leaves. Mm. But be careful, you're going to start popping at this age with the dried chili. I used to hate my granny doing that when I was little. Oh, now next. <laughs> See what I mean? As soon as you get the aroma from there, we're going to add a little bit of beef. Now, I love adding a little bit of beef and a little, just a touch of lentils into my maligatani because I think it adds body. About, say, 200. This is probably slightly more than 200. Yeah. But we're going to use it all up. Now we're going to, at this stage, we're going to turn the heat up slightly because we're just going to brown the beef mm. and mix everything in. Okay. That looks good, Aslan. Uh, as a matter of fact, some folks just popped into the Q&A app. Coach Moore says, happy to see you using the Showcase app. Nice to see. Have a nice time to you all. Uh, from MJJ, he's from Sri Lanka. You just you just talked about him and you talked him up. <laughs> Hi, Namal. We were just talking about you. Do you, as you are so close to 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 the Tamil Nadu area, to South um, India, do you speak Tamil, Namal? By any chance, let us know in the comment stream. Now, Namal okay. must know this too. Right. So we've done that. Next thing, what we're going to do is we are going to add the dry ingredients number two. So this is to add more flavor, to deepen the flavor. Same thing happens when you are cooking a curry. Now, the, the, taste, the taste of the maligatani, is, it is a soup, it is a stew, a, a lighter than usual stew, and the predominant flavor profile is hot and sour. Now we are adding a little bit of curry, uh, curry ingredients here, as in the turmeric, the cumin, and the coriander, but not so much that it's going to overpower the whole thing. Now next time I've got carrots, celery, some capsicum or bell pepper, and some tomatoes. Now the bell pepper here, I've roasted them. You don't have to do that, but I love to roast 
a lot of my vegetables when I'm used before I add them to my stews and to my curries because I think they add a certain amount of depth to the final to the final um, result. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. so now we've added all that. Now all the other ingredients are going to come in. First of all, we've got some stock here. Kim Boltman says hi. Kim. And, yeah, Kim Boltman. Hi Kim. Hi Kim. And, and Lady Esteli Contreras. She says hola. She said everything looks good. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> so about a liter, 750 mils to a liter of stock. Now we're going to let this come to boil. In the meantime. <coughs> mm -mm, still suffering from the chilies there. In the meantime, we're going to put some lentils, everything else. Oh, one quick thing. <coughs> the list of ingredients is quite long. But once you've got it all prepared, as you, as you saw, the dry ingredients in two separate plates, um, the vegetables, which could be a little labor intensive because you're going to chop them all up. But once you've got everything done, when you have a look at the recipe, five steps. That's it. Five steps. And then you let it cook away for about an hour. So we increase the heat and we, because we want this to come to um, a boil. Now, here are your lentils, red slit lentils. Mm. I've rinsed them and they've also got stuck to each other. Red slit lentils because they don't need to be soaked. You can use them without soaking. Oh, look, first time. I've learned a lesson today. If you rinse lentils and you leave them to dry, look, they get stuck to each other. Ha -ha, you learn something every day. Then you, really all I need to do is to rinse this and it'll, it'll come apart. So we're just going to add that in there. The lentils add body. So however much lentil you want to add is completely up to you. Two tablespoons, three tablespoons, completely up to you. And then next, one question, Lynn, please. Uh, these lentils, yeah. um, how much time uh, do they need to, to cook? The lentils? Yeah. These lentils, the red split lentils. The um, red lentils, yeah. At 20 minutes, at 30, that's all. And they don't need soaking, which is why they're one of my favorites. Because I just use them all the time to add body and depth to anything. Um, you know, because quite often, you know, lentils, you need sure you have the quick soak method, but you really ideally ought to soak your pulses overnight. Two tablespoons of tomato puree. One, two. Uh -huh. uh, Chris Vogelman asks, are blue plates essential for a Singapore meal? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I've picked all these up at, 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 at uh, what do you call them, thrift shop? We call them charity shops here for a pound for the lot of them. I thought they will do for my blog, so. <laughs> <laughs> he always has something smart to say. <laughs> uh, why, are you, why are you watching my show? I thought you were on Evan Johnson's show. What's going on? I, I, I think Evan, he's... Does Evan know you're not actually on? It's only a hologram? I think he's multitasking. He's switching between shows. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh... Next. Just just a touch. So okay, it's coming to boil. Next, just a touch of mustard because something that I I I, I came to this conclusion many years ago. Whenever you cook cook with beef in a stew, not really curry, but in a stew, a touch of mustard goes a long way into deepening mm. its flavor. I think mustard brings out the beauty of beef. So just a touch of mustard, and I, then I, remember I said, yes, Larry. No, I said I totally agree with you. Mustard does something to the food. It it gives it a a nice depth, like you said. It does, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I use it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually not a fan of mustard, but when it comes to cooking with beef, I do add it in. Now, yeah, yeah. So there we go. It's, it's simmering away. So, as I said, the whole the whole ingredient uh, ingredient is full recipes on linsfood.com. Now, we said, we said hot and sour. So we've added the chili powder. We've added the black pepper. We we started off tempering with dry red chilies. Now comes the sour. 
the tomatoes have gone in, a couple of tomatoes have gone in. Now comes the sour. Um, here we go. This is tamarind. Mm. If you go to linsfood.com, rather, go to the recipe. There is the link for tamarind. It will take you to a page on tamarind, and, and I explain to you how to use tamarind, etc., etc. Now, this is from the pulp itself. This is ready-made. I buy this and keep it in the fridge for my cooking shows because it's only got 34% tamarind, which is rubbish. 34%? Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the only way you're going to get the proper flavor is to use this. It looks gross. This is tamarind pulp found, where's my camera, found mm -hmm. in all Asian shops. There you yeah, go. So yeah, essentially, that's, you take that's, that, you put it in a bowl, yeah. okay, you add some hot water and let it soak for about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and then you've got to use your hand. You've got to get in there and really mesh that up, okay? And then you just strain it that way. Ah. Get a spoon or use your fingers, whatever, mm. to get the tamarind juice or tamarind water. So, mm. you know, ready-made jars are fine, but you've got to use a whole lot more. Unless the jar actually says one tablespoon of this is equal to that, you know, whatever. But mine doesn't. That one doesn't, and it only has 34% um, of tamarind, which really is nowhere near enough what you actually yeah. need because this is a hot and sour dish. This is what my granny used to do. That looks good, Lavin. So there you go. It looks real good. It ain't cooking if you don't get messy. Just a couple of people saying a shout out to you, Aslan, Coach uh, G, Coach G Moore, Ivan Rivero. John C. D. uh well, Kim Boltman. Everybody says looking good. Hi, everybody. You're talking about me, aren't you? You weren't talking about the dish. No, I'm looking good. <laughs> well, you're looking superb. <laughs> the dish is looking good. <laughs> I haven't cooked. It feels like it's been ages since I last cooked. So I, I know. I've been getting... doing that line recently, have I? So you're, you're, you you're, you're getting rusty. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I put everything in there. So now we're going to let this cook away for about 30 to 45 minutes. Now I've got minced beef in there. Of course, traditionally it's a vegetarian soup, uh, but I like to add depth by adding a bit of beef. And there are so many different types of, of, of maligatani soup. You've got them with chicken. You've got them with, um, you know, purely vegetarian. So your usual, your usual vegetables like courgettes, eggplants, um, even okra that goes in very well, and potatoes. Potatoes are always going to be good in that, in this. So um, we're going to let this cook away. Wow, oh, I'm early again. And um, we could stay here for 30 minutes and wait for it to cook, or we could go down the rooftop. Here's one I prepared here. Yeah. So well, what, what, what do you have to drink? What do you have to drink? Right, cheers. I haven't got water today. No, you just got water. Okay. Uh, Elena, Elena says hi, Lynn. Hi, Elena. So you see, I'm, I'm, I'm all out of drinks. I've only got Kalua at the moment. I know you can make black Russian or white Russian and what have you not with Kalua, but you need vodka. I haven't got vodka at home. I've only got Kalua. I finished my Quantro. I finished my tequila. I have finished everything. You have any rum? You have any rum in the house? <laughs> no, man. I've only got Kalua. So yesterday I was really desperate and I made some Kalua milk. It was rubbish. Oh gosh! Used to be good when I was twenty, you know, but these days yeah, yeah. my milk is rubbish. So there you go. So yeah, so I've only got water. That's that's why I went down that route. So we're just gonna move this away, and I'm gonna show you the final product. So really, after about thirty to forty-five minutes, mm -hmm. it's and going to yeah. And we we keep it on on one constant flame, correct? About medium. Um, 
We no, we cook it. We cook it at a simmer. Sorry, we could cook it at a okay. simmer. We cover it. We cook it at a simmer uh, until so 30 to 45 minutes until it cooks down and it thickens. So here we go. This is this is what the final product looks like. So it's cooked down. It's mm. not as much as 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 um, when I first cooked it because folks have had dinner in this house. So um, there we go. So this is what it's gonna look like. That looks delicious. Is it, is it in the um, top camera? So yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's Definitely. thickened. It's thickened, but it's still broth-like. So it's it's a cross between a broth and a stew. Um, as I said, traditionally you don't have the beef in there. And I've seen maligatani with um, coconut milk. I've seen maligatani with yogurt with cream. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we are going to just dish this up. Let's see if I can dish up without making a mess. It makes me think about uh, shorba, shorba soup, you know, North okay. American soup. Mm. So here we are. Mm. Hold it up to the camera, Lynn. Let me. Uh, I shall. I shall. Let me just get this out of the way. Okay. No. Is it in, is it in the camera? No, push it back a little bit to your to your right, to your right. Ooh, to my right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Up, up, so what are you gonna do? Yeah. Hang on. Do you want it? Do you want it moved some more? Yeah, just a little bit more to your right. You know so what? Right. Uh, okay. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so what we're going to do now is we're just going to finish it off. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the shortcut. Oh, I always do this, don't I? I always go off and get something, a utensil. So this is my lazy way of doing herbs. So finish it off with some coriander. Nice. That's Lynn's lazy way of doing herbs. Okay, and one of the simple pleasures of life is freshly ground black pepper. So there we go. And if you like a little bit of green chili, as if it wasn't hot enough already. Spicy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. spicy, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, this is very spicy. I've had a taste of this. This is very spicy. That so looks now, fantastic. How do you eat it? Well, traditionally with rice, of course. But another, and this is traditional, okay? In Singapore, we have we have lots of parties where this maligatani soup will be there, uh, or curry, and there's nothing like baguette with curry. Mm. And baguette's not meant to be cut. Baguette's meant to. to be. You have to do this. <laughs> you have to break it apart. You have to break it apart. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You have to break it apart. So we want some baguette to dip it. And what is Indian food? Sorry to be so stereo. What's Indian food without it? Yeah. Roti. Roti. Uh, <laughs> there we are. Uh. So I'll just taste it for you, shall I? Go ahead. Yum. Oh. Needless to say. Whoo! Ah. Whoo! That's spicy. <laughs> ah. oh. <laughs> that is spicy. Right. So it really is extremely, extremely simple. Very, very easy. Once you've got all the ingredients, it just goes in five steps. Let it cook 30 to 45 minutes and then we're done. So you can serve it with rice. You can serve it with bread. My husband loves eating it with mashed potato. So oh, really? There you go. Yeah. It's perfect with mash. So there you go. Maligatami soup. Uh, a very Anglo-Indian dish. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm, I'm ready to eat some now. <laughs> for, those, uh, for those of you who've just come in or came in late after the intro, Larry's wearing his Indian shirt. He's wearing his Indian shirt. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing my... What, what do you call this in... in, in uh, well, I know it as salwa kameez. I don't yes, know if it's a yes. men. Men's outfit is called the same thing, but um, I think that's what it's called. But the day's outfit is certainly a salwa kameez. So, yeah. I mean, salwa is, the, salwa is trousers and kameez is the shirt. So that's what it means. And you know, something happened here, Aslan. Uh-oh. The, uh, 
the Q and A, not not the Q and A app, but the um, uh, showcase app. Ah, uh, the thing lost. <laughs> I don't worry about it. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of the show like that. So if you uh, have one, I don't care. That wasn't a HOA mystery. I'll, I'll, no, no. I'll fix it. I'll, I'll fix it. I'll, I just, I just fix it. I just fixed it. <laughs> Look, so, if, if something doesn't go wrong, it is not a real <laughs> Seriously, you've seen enough of our shows to know that. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, well, it looks like the showcase app is sometime it, it wants to go and then it's not showing. Ah. Well, the, the folks out there who are seeing it, great. If you're not seeing it, sorry. <laughs> uh, one of those things. So as uh, I guess you can you can take us. Take us away. Yeah, well, there you go. Did you want to say um, uh, anything about the, the end of, of the month? What's happening? What oh. is happening on Harry? Oh, no, you talk about it, uh, what you're doing on the 25th, and then I will come in and say what. Is it the. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Michelle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, tell us what's happening on the 25th, Michelle. Oh my God! I'm I'm so happy that you talk about this. I was afraid that Larry was too busy. Was so busy. You know. <laughs> I know that you are on a real H I R L a hangout in real life with yes, Googlers, sir. and uh, in France, I'm going to make a kind of H I R L, but they are not really on Google. Um, yes, we have a we are organizing a very important event. And um, we will be all together, and with Chef Dennis also, and uh, also Martin Shillington and David Ameland. We are going to make a food bloggers and brands digital meeting. So we are going to meet and talk about uh, food blogging and branding. So uh, that's all. Did I forget something, Lynn? No, no, that was good. So essentially, folks, on the 25th of September, I think it's the first day, um, yeah. Michel and some of his um, colleagues in France are organizing a digital marketing conference, and we, we are all going to be there in the HOA on the panel. Um, and um, a few days later, of course, you guys must have seen that there is organizing a hurl. Right, right there is? Right. Yeah, it's going to be starting the same day as your event. So I will be joining your event from Denver, from the hurl, the first day of the hurl. So I'll be chiming in, and it's perfect because we have brands uh, who who will be sponsoring what we're doing there in Denver, and you guys are talking about brands. Cool, Great. cool. It's, 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 it's going it's going to be good because you know I love this time of year when autumn comes around. The smell, the cold, I love it, and then it's Christmas. Yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And I'll, so the next Simply Singapore show will actually be during Larry's Colorado Hill. Um, yeah. It's going to be yeah. on the 28th. It's going to be the 28th of Sunday. I will send you the schedule as promised, Aslan. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll probably get it on the 27th or something. Right, no, we will. Yeah. yeah. Um, shall, I, shall, I, shall I take that? Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Everybody, thank you so much once again for watching Simply Singapore. It's always sweet, spicy, and sexy. And we shall see you again. Savor the Flavor will be back next week. And we shall see you on Save the Flavor, and we shall see you on Simply Singapore, and we shall see you on the 25th for the Digital Marketing HOA as well. Okay. Hasta la vista. Baby. Good <laughs>